back. Um, we're going to be switching our conversation now to talk about the 2018 budget. Yes, we're in May. That's five months into the new year. And the 2018 budget submitted to the National Assembly is yet to be passed. In March, I mean, four months later, President Buhari had directed all ministries and, you know, departments to submit every detail of their budget to the National Assembly, no matter how minute. But um, we are still, we're not even talking, we're not even talking yet about Mr. President assenting to the, to the bill. We're still talking about it being passed. And we're almost halfway through 2015, 2018, sorry. And, and um, elections are already in the air. We don't know how much time there will be to implement anything else before primaries and uh, politicking takes over, takes, over the, takes, takes over the nation. And it's, it's quite weird for a lot of people, but I'm, I'm going to have two guests here help me understand some of this. I have you with me, Lena Debute. Thanks for being here today. And for that, thanks for coming. A pleasure. Okay. Um, <laughs> let me start with you, Leonard. I mean, it's... Isn't it weird enough? I mean, considering that this, the, this particular budget, the, pre, the government, I want to believe, tried mm. to submit early enough. I don't know if they did eventually. I don't know. They did try to submit before the end of last year. Is the National Assembly, you think, to blame? Do you think the federal government haven't done enough in defending the budget? Why are we still at this point in May? Oh, well. Um, two things, a few things here. So the first one I want to mention is that the role of budgeting in national planning in Nigeria at this moment seems to be irrelevant. It appears because uh, there is no visible impact uh, economically uh, to us that the budget hadn't been passed for five months into the year. That tells me that the role budgeting is supposed to play in national planning uh, is no longer the case it played in Nigeria. In the, in the U.S. in 2013, when there was this kind of issues in the Obama era, there was a shutdown. Uh, a government shutdown implied that non-essential government functions were completely shut there was down. No funding for and anything. some people were not getting paid, some people were paying half salaries, some people were working and not getting paid at all, and others were asked to go on a furlough. But in Nigeria, everything seemed to be on autopilot. That tells me that the budget, as it stands today, is just uh, a piece of paper. Maybe that explains why past budgets had had performances as low as 30% last year, was 47% and so on. Um, that said, um, why this has happened, a, a few things. See, the office, I'll say this and I say this with uh, a measure of seriousness. The office of the president is a political office. So when a piece of legislation is presented to the National Assembly for discussions or for appropriation, as, as important as an appropriation bill, it behoves on the president to be able to tinker with all the relevant political buttons to get that document passed. I do not subscribe to the view that the National Assembly is delaying the budget for unknown reasons. First, that National Assembly is dominated by members of the, of the president's party. And I expect that he should be able to tap from his political resource to get what he requires to run the nation. If that has not happened, the number one failure lies with the office of the president. Do you agree? Not necessarily. And first, the reason is that if you look at him as a person, his personality is that of a leader and not necessarily a politician. So maybe enough lobbying is not going on, as we have had in the past. And when you don't have that, one of the things that you get is there are people who want to hold you to ransom. But let's look at it in a bit more critical issue, uh, the critical aspect of it. I think that the National Assembly is also trying to prove that we have some powers because the budget was actually sent in last year. And we expected that since it was sent in early, then there will be enough time to go through everything that needs to be passed. A number of times now, the... House of Rep has shifted the date they said they were going to appropriate eventually. But talking about the consequence of the budget on the economy before I come back to the budget itself, one of the things that can happen if the budget is not passed on time is that by law, the president can actually go back into the previous year, spend a portion that was appropriated for something in the previous budget, but it will not exceed what was sent into the National Assembly for the current year. There's also something they call anticipatory approval from the Assembly. So that can happen. However, everything comes around politics. One of the things that we should do, I think maybe the executive should look at is, they have made the move to get this thing passed on time. 
Maybe if they know that it will take about six months for the National Assembly to pass it, maybe they should start sending in a budget around June, July, so that the National Assembly will not have any excuse to say by December or by January of the new year, we haven't passed the budget. But you, Again, can't, you, can't, you, you also to, can't deny the point he makes about politicking anywhere in the world. Yes, Especially that, where there's that, an executive system. That, that, that's you can't, an issue. You can't excuse however, the fact that that's Mr. An president issue, cannot however, play politics. That's an He's issue. a politician, whether we that's, like it that's or not. That's an issue. However, the issue of politics on the budget, I think it lies more on the, on the part of the National Assembly than it does on the part of the executive. executive. And I'll tell mm -hmm. you why. For example, most of those ministries will expose their budgets eventually. They're being asked to come and defend their budgets. Who defends the budgets of the National Assembly? Till date, we're still asking the National Assembly to present its budget, make sure that your budget is open. Our friend, Sheo Nigbide, has been talking constantly about it, saying, please, make open the budget of the National Assembly. Nobody has been able, we don't know exactly, we only have essays, we don't know exactly how much a senator earns. Leonard, why do you think there's not enough talk about the fact that we don't have a budget passed yet? Because I feel like I open the newspapers and there's a lot of talk about other things. Nobody seems to be shedding enough spotlight on this issue why do you think it's not that important yeah so again uh, again two things I, I explained that so first of all was that um last year when in early 2016 when national income accounting uh, was done and we were purportedly out of recession uh, many of us that have basic knowledge in economics, when we did our calculations, they didn't add up. The only reason we were out of recession at that time was that the, the fiscal year, which is supposed to run from January to December, uh, the national income accounting done at that time extended it beyond that period which meant that certain monies were rolled over into the previous years, into the, the, the succeeding year. That's exactly what is happening now. Last year's budget was passed pretty late as well. So that cycle is going on. So instead of running a January to December fiscal year, we appear to be running something like a June. May to May <laughs> or a June to June fiscal year, which, which is exactly what he tried to paint, that the government has the mandate to be able to spend not exceeding the previously approved yeah. uh, budget. That said, that, that said, now I, I completely can understand the logic that the National Assembly is pushing forward. I, I came here not with the intention of talking about the quality of the budget, but if we are to go to the quality of the budget, it's a very lazy budget. When you put the line item side by side, the previous year's line item, it appears as if somebody just applied the 16% on top of last year's budget across line items. There isn't sufficient uh, uh, evidence that some rigor went into this budget we, 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 to correlate the numbers on the budget with specific projects is, is a little bit difficult unless you now go to the areas where they talked about new big long-term projects like the second Niger Bridge and all of that. Apart from that and the, the, the renovation of the Mambila, they aren't across lines you just see almost a markup that didn't yeah. make sense. So I can understand the frustration of the National Assembly. Yeah. However, let me, let me correct a notion. The budget is an executive document. Nigeria is not like the US where the most sensible version of the budget is the one written by the Congress eventually. The president presents something more general and then the Congress in their committees go into the rigor of rewriting the most sensible version of it. That's what happens in the US. In Nigeria, it is the opposite. But well, don't forget, the, 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 let me finish. The, 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 the executive arm of government presents a budget, defends each and every line on that budget. And upon successful defense, the National Assembly appropriates, signs the appropriation bill, which then goes back to the executive for executive assent. So the responsibility for this job lies in the, with the office of the president. And when we isolate issues like we cannot see the budget for the National Assembly, that budget is part of the budget for Nigeria. So the president cannot lay claim to any kind of blindness as it relates to spending by the National Assembly. The National Assembly isn't spending outside of appropriation.